the president would actually suffice to abolish the entity itself. Next slide, please. Next is the classification of GOCC. So under RA 10149, there is a specified list of GOCC classifications and would like to seek clarification from the legislature that such list is only directory, it's not a mandatory list to be implemented and that there may be several other classifications that the GCG may undertake for classifying GOCCs for the purposes of implementing the provisions of the act. Next slide, please. Also in the definition of a GOCC, so RA10149 provides a definition of a GOCC which is actually aligned with the administrative code and other laws issued by the legislature with the exception that it includes GICPs and government corporate, uh, government corporate entities for purposes of the act. Whereas in other legislation such as the dividends law, such proviso is also not included. So we encountered a situation where there was a GOCC classified as a government instrumentality vested with corporate powers that actually refused to remit dividends considering under the dividends law, GICPs are not covered by the dividends law. So we would like to ask the legislature to look into harmonizing the definition of GOCCs across all legislations so that they may have equal application in all instances. Next slide, please. Next is the composition of the GCG in terms of office of the chairman and commissioners. For this, we looked at other regulatory agencies to benchmark the practices and the provisions of their respective charters. So primarily, we looked at the charter of the Philippine Competition Commission, which is a commission created after the GCG. So for consideration of the legislature is providing fixed terms of office for the GCG chairman and commissioners because currently the law does not provide for any term of office for our chairman and commissioners, so they all serve at the pleasure of the president. So by providing fixed terms of office, it provides a certain level of independence on the part of the commission in performing its mandate. Also to include specific qualifications for the chairman and commissioners, there is no minimum qualification to be appointed to the governance commission and unlike other uh, commissions, such as the Philippine Competition Commission that provides for minimum age requirements, experience, and fields of expertise, the legislature may also consider providing the same for the Governance Commission, as well as to reinforce the uh, Governance Commission in the discharge of its function through provision of indemnity clauses, such as uh, that is found in the PCC and even the SEC. Next slide, please. As already discussed earlier, it's uh, vesting the GCG with subpoena in content power so that we may be able to compel GOCCs to submit documents to the Governance Commission and to provide the adequate penalties for non-compliance from the GOCCs. Next slide, please. Also to provide investigatory and disciplinary powers to the GCG with respect specifically to their boards of directors. So currently under the GOCC Governance Act, the GCG is only recommendatory in terms of imposing disciplinary uh, penalties on boards of directors. So we can only recommend to the board of the GOCC the suspension of its CEO or to the president the removal of a uh, board director. But GCG in and of itself cannot exercise disciplinary authority over GOCC boards nor do we have investigatory powers or functions to be able to look into deeper uh, mismanagement in any GOCC. So this is concomitant to the subpoena and contempt powers that we are requesting. Next slide, please. Also to empower the supervising agencies of abolished GOCCs to designate a member of the governing board to implement the dissolution of the corporation. So for SEC registered corporations, for example, they still require a board to implement the liquidation under SEC rules. So similarly, for other corporations, especially chartered corporations, this is to enable their supervising agencies or the departments to which these GOCCs are attached to designate liquidating boards to implement the dissolution of these GOCCs that have been approved for abolition. Next slide, please. 
also to amend the terms of office of the members of the governing boards of GOCCs. This is a recurring theme that we hear whenever we have GOCCs attend congressional and senate inquiries. Currently, under the GOCC Governance Act, the term of office of board directors is one year, which has a holdover provision, but submitted for consideration is amendment of the terms of office of GOCC boards. Instead of being one year, it can be for a possible term of two years. Next slide, please. Also amending the limits to compensation for directors and trustees of the boards of directors of GOCCs. So while the GOCC Governance Act enables the Commission to set the compensation and limits to per diems of GOCCs that are profitable, there are certain classes of GOCCs that the GECG is only recommendatory in setting the compensation for, and this includes GOCCs that are subsidized and classified as social civic. So we would like to request the legislature to empower the GCG to set the limits of compensation and without specific reference to Executive Order Number 24, which is a 2010 issuance that limits the compensation of GOCCs, considering the Executive Order is already 12 years old and might not be at par with the uh, movements in the market in terms of compensation of board directors. And is it in conflict with the express mandate for the provisions of law sa, sa batas nyo. Kasi sa batas nyo, sinasabi nga na kayo ang dapat mag-determine kung ano yung competitive. Pero sa EO, sinasabi niya hanggang dito lang. So parang may, may inherit conflict yung dalawa. No? The law itself actually, uh, Mr. Chairman says, using as reference EO 24, while it does not explicitly say that we have to adopt the rates under EO 24, so to be able to clarify that we are not bound by EO 24, the any express reference to the EO is requested to be deleted from the law. Next slide, please. Next is the creation of an executive director for the commission, similar to the Philippine Competition Commission, and to provide oversight powers on GOCC assets, specifically requiring GOCCs to submit to the Governance Commission the list of all its real property so that we may know what actual real property assets these GOCCs may actually hold at any given time. Let, let me ask about that. Diba dalawang, at least when I was in law school, diba dalawa yung klase ng GOCC, yung may original charter, meaning may batas that gives them a charter, and yung nagka-charter through SEC, no? So, yung may original charter, covered ng COA yan. Actually, both chartered both. and non-chartered are covered by the Commission. So, Committee. does the COA give you a uh, copy every year of the, their properties or hindi siya specified? The COA provides us copies of their annual reports of GOCCs, but unless COA also has specific lists of uh, their properties that we do not know of. Maybe to speed that point up, in one of our hearings, let's have a um, new director and let's ask who's in charge of COA. Then let's figure that out, whether uh, officially in a hearing or over coffee. You know? Because that should be simple, because it's a simple transparency issue, eh, diba? Dapat talaga. Even the shareholders, they should know kung ano yung assets ng isang uh, kumpanya, eh, diba? Next slide, please. So in terms of reorganization and compensation of GCG, so this was what was mentioned by our chairman earlier, to create additional organizational units and positions to implement the our proposed R mandates and to provide competitive compensation to GOCC officers and GCG employer, uh, officers and employees so that we be able to uh, respond to the needs of our GOCCs. Next slide, please. Other proposals is to include in Section 26 of RA 10149 the uh, authority to request from the NBI special investigations for GOCC. So the provision already enables us to request from the Commission on Audit special audit of any GOCC. So we'd like to also include the National Bureau of Investigation to be able to uh, initiate investigations in certain GOCCs and to obtain the assistance of the COA in the performance evaluation of GOCCs, considering they also do operational audits of GOCCs. 
and also to enable the Commission to charge reasonable administrative fees from GC GOCCs for us to be able to perform our function, similar to that of the SEC, and the filling up of our vacancies as well as other uh, benefits for the GCG officers and employees. Director, just a minute. Um, sa mga officials ng SSS, we're finishing up the presentation, but uh, please have lunch, so please, you can occupy, wala naman yung ibang mga senador, so please take uh, the vacant uh, uh, positions. Uh, Chairman uh, Justice Quiroz will be evaluating you over lunch. <laughs> 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 Director, please proceed. Thank you. Next slide, please. So, those are our proposed legislations or amendments to the GOCC Governance Act, and this just provides an overview of the GOCC sector that the GCG oversees. So currently, there are 118 active GOCCs under the coverage of GCG under various sectors, and we have successfully recommended for the approval of the President the abolition of 31 GOCCs, the privatization of four GOCCs, and the classification of 26 other uh, GOCCs as inactive or non-operational GOCCs. Quick question, Director. So, tinitingnan nyo kung anong dapat emerge, i-abolish, or i-privatize. Kasama ba din sa function nyo, tignan yung dapat um, kunin ng gobyerno or reverse privatization. So, for example lang, for example, if yung nag-spiral out of hand yung uh, yung presyo ng langis ngayon and meron suggestion na o oh, dapat ang Petron or katulad ng Petron hindi dapat hindi mali pala na pre-nibitize natin yan dapat pala GOCC yan kasama ba siya function yan or hindi it's not part of our functions not, it's not really the province of the other agencies of the or, or of congress no oh. but parang it's the other side of the coin di ba na parang logical din na habang tinitignan nyo kung anong dapat i-privatize, meron din parang yung, at least yung research unit nyo, kung ano yung pabor sa gobyerno na i-nationalize. You know? Of course, without affecting investor confidence, and I'm not saying we should do that to Petron, I'm just giving an example. Or, or another example is not to, to nationalize it, but for the government to have its its uh, counterpart or its GOCC regarding that, di ba? Oh. Next slide, please. So these are the ongoing programs of the GCG, as mentioned by our chairman earlier, our GOCC sector rationalization, the liquidation of abolished GOCCs, performance evaluation, corporate governance scorecards, uh, compensation and position classification system, as well as integrated corporate reporting systems and a whistleblowing policy for the GOCC sector. Next slide, please. In terms of size of the GOCC sector, these are the total assets of the sector, around 10 trillion as of 2021, based on an audited financial statements. And we have a total of around 86,000 government employees in the GOCC sector. Next slide, please. As mentioned by our chairman, the average dividend remittance of GOCCs now are around 37 billion annually. Next slide. Director, so annually yan? So hindi yung naipon lang? Yes, annually. Next so yan, yan ang estimate nyo? Yes, we will show yung sa next slide, Mr. Chair, the actual dividend remittances of GOCCs through the years. Next slide, please. There. So that's the dividend remittance of GOCCs on a year-to-year -year basis. So from 2011 to 2021, the GOCCs remit an average of 37 billion pesos in dividends annually. Again, uh, quick question. Lang. So for example, uh, sa civil aviation, no? um, what's the rule in yung ibibigay nila as remittance and yung pwede nilang i-keep to improve their let's say their equipment or sa compensation, sila yung board din nila nagdi-decide? The minimum dividend requirement is at least 50%, Mr. Chair. And the DOF may require, for example, GOCs to remit more, but the minimum is 50%. But what if they need for their own uh, survival or improvement more than 50%? Then, then they, 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 write they, may the, they may request it from the DOF and the president so may DOF. approve zero dividends, for example, for certain GOCs. Yes. But katulad ng, let's say, PAGCOR, 
sa batas nila may yeah, nakalagay na na yes I'll ano yung hatian eh, di ba yes, nung nung dividend nila but like in the case of Fagcor na meron hatian and parating issue doon yung para sa sports for example does uh, GCB have a rule do they remit everything to the DBM then the DBM is the one that distributes or can the GOCC uh, give it directly to the beneficiary as identified by the law? It's required to be remitted to the Treasury directly, Mr. Chairman. But that's siguro a regulation, no? not, not a, um, what do you call that? Wala sa batas yan siguro. No? May, may I ask Director Pablinas to help us out and look, look at that then? No? Kasi yan ang constant, uh, Pagdating sa PCSO at saka sa PAGCOR, yan ang parating tanong na kung sila ay listed as a beneficiary, pag binigay ng DBM, baka hindi nila makuha. Ganon din ang reklamo ng militar sa BCBA. But in the case of the military kasi, um, talaga naman through the DBM, kung pera. But in the case, for example, ng, uh, ng uh, sports, it can actually go into certain events or to the NSAs or to uh, whatever na, na diretsyo sa kanila or to the PSC, no? Uh -huh. Next slide, please. The next part of the presentation is the compensation and position classification system and with the indulgence of the committee, I'd like to ask Director Karen Pascasio to present the same. Good afternoon po, uh, Mr. Chairman. So for the compensation and position classification system for GOCCs, um, it must be noted that in 2021, <laughs> then-President um, Rodrigo Roa Duterte issued Executive Order Number 150. Um, it, was, uh, it approved the compensation and position classification system for the GOCC sector. Now we are to present the salient features of the revised CPCS. The CPCS shall apply to all GOCCs, including their subsidiaries under the coverage of RA 1149. The, COC, the CPCS shall not apply to GOCCs with approved abolition or deactivation orders. Under the um, CPCS, GOCCs are to be classified based on the following descriptors. So we have three categories of the GOCCs. For category one, these are GOCCs that are not self-sustaining, either because re they rely on the national government subsidies to fund their day-to-day -day operations, or they have an average net loss for the last three years, regardless whether they receive subsidies or not. And then category two GOCCs, those that, that are self-sustaining through sources of funds generated from non-commercial activities. And category three GOCCs that are self-sustaining through sources of funds generated from commercial activities with products and services that compete with the private sector. So important po yung classification of the GOCCs to determine the applicable salary structure. Next, please. So under the CPCS, next slide, please. The monthly basic salary and the allowances, benefits, and incentives of GOCCs shall be standardized. Additional compensation outside those provided under EO150 may be granted by the GOCCs only if the same has been approved by the president. The CPCS also recognizes the non-diminution of current authorized salaries of the incumbent officers and employees. And finally, the... Yes, po. Yung sinasabi mong EO, yun yung naka-epekto sa mga taga-CLARC? Yes, po. Uh -oh. Correct. And what's the status nun? Would you know? Um, EO 150 po um, is currently being implemented by more than 60 GOCCs, including the Clark Development Corporation. So CDC already received their authorization to implement the CPCS. Nag-appeal sila, di ba? I mean, yes, yun dun po. sa... I, I think it's logical naman kasi na... Um, any change, hindi dapat bumaba yung sweldo ng mga tao, eh, di ba? So, is that under appeal na sa Office of the President yun, na sa inyo, or MR with? Um, Nag-file po sila, nag-submit po ng um, motion for consideration ng CDC sa GCG. Okay, and you're looking into it? Apo, we're looking into yeah. it. Um, 
I, I won't, uh, you know, talk specifically of that, but I think as a general rule, unless there is a finding na excessive talaga from the start, pero kung hindi naman excessive from the start, parang masyadong, uh, how do I put it, harsh at saka nakaka-stress sa pamilya ng nasa gobyerno to think na na pwedeng bawasan, di ba? Kasi sa private, you can run to NLRC, di ba? And say, bakit naman binawasan? Eh, eto, di ka naman pwede mag sa Malacanang or ganyan. So I think unless you find na talagang niluto nila na masyadong mataas. A anyway, let, let me just mention that here kasi nga I think that will be a issue na babantayan ng lahat ng GOCC at lahat ng uh, government uh, employees. And, and I think kung hindi ako nagkakamali, apektado din ang GSIS coverage nila doon, di ba? Um, actually po si CDC, um, I think from SSS po sila because not SSS. Prepared. And then they will, I, I'm not sure po if um, they will change to GSIS po. But okay. um, uh, Mr. Chair, as to the last bullet po in connection with the CDC, um, EO 150 po kasi, um, it upholds the ruling of the Supreme Court in the case of GSIS Family Bank versus Billion Nueva, wherein non-chartered GOCs are not allowed to negotiate the economic terms and conditions of employment. I think ito po yung issue ng CDC because their C under their CBAs, they have their benefits, um, allowances, and incentives that are no longer covered by um, EO 150. Kaya po masastop siya pursuant to EO 150. But again po, the motion for reconsideration is being reviewed by the Commission. And um, we will also submit then po um, to the Office of the President whatever recommendation the GCG may find after the evaluation of the NR. Then if I may proceed lang po to the next slide, the other salient provisions of the CPCS. So the authorized allowances, benefits, and incentives currently being received by the GOCCs that will be discontinued upon the implementation of the CPCS shall be paid the three-year present value using the formula provided under EO 150. The grant of the performance-based bonus, or PBB, shall be based on and not to exceed the 100% of the monthly basic salary of an incumbent, subject to conditions and rules under EO 150. And GOCCs falling under category 2 or 3 under the CPCS may grant a specific incumbent a higher PBB rate of up to 150%, if uh, of the incumbent's monthly basic salary subject to the approval of the GOCC governing board, the endorsement of the supervising agency, and the final approval of the GCG. And share um, for the last slide on the CPCS, EO 150 also rationalized the rates of the Provident Fund. Next slide, please. So the Provident Fund of GOC shall be rationalized based on the rates provided under EO 150. The health care of all GOCs shall be through the premium-based health insurance that will be offered to GOCs by PhilHealth in compliance with Section 11 of the Universal Health Care Act. And pending the implementation of the premium-based health insurance to be offered by PhilHealth, all GOCs must comply with the ruling of um, the Supreme Court in Feeds versus COA that um, GOCs must not procure another health insurance in addition to the health program already provided by the government through field health. So these are the salient features of the CPCS under EO 150, Mr. Chair. Just a quick question on that. So what if yung present health insurance nila is much better than field health? They have to shift pa rin to field health. Uh, unfortunately, yes, what they have to shift to PhilHealth because um, under the Universal Health Care Act, PhilHealth is actually mandated to come up with a health insurance program for all of the GOCC sectors. But since PhilHealth is a GOCC, may I request, Mr. Chair, that we look into that? Because many LGUs may PhilHealth, but kumukuha pa sila. Kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ang Senate, may PhilHealth kami, pero meron din private. So, ang parati ko sinasabi sa PhilHealth, but hindi kayo mag-offer ng premium kahit na mas malaki babayaran namin kaysa sa dalawa yung, yung binabayaran na natin. If not, kung hindi nyo kaya, then you should give us a choice, di ba? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, yes. as uh, even the uh, our director have cited a decided case by the Supreme Court, but 
the Supreme Court, the Sandigambaya, we have a separate health guard. We are now having two, uh, pill health and a separate health guard. Same situation. Uh, Which for me, Sinis. Justice, is Apo. not inherently wrong. But kung kaya naman ng pill health na magbigay uh, ng premium, kasi isa ko pang example, ah. Halimbawa po, Coast Guard, uh, firefighters, BJMP, police, militar, no? Mas delikado talaga buhay nila. So, kung i-authorize naman ng gobyerno na bigyan sila ng private insurance, eh kung ikaw naman ay teacher or health worker, sabi mo, eh bakit sila? Meron ng field health, meron pang uh, private, di ba? But, if uh, field health will have a Diba? Level 1, level 2, level 3. So maybe we can work together in uh, sorting that out. I know in the last administration, problem child yung feel health. But uh, masyadong malaki ang kanilang role sa Pilipinas at sa gobyerno to, you know, to not solve this specific problem. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we are one to that purpose. Actually, <coughs> The problem is uh, the problems, the the magnitude of responsibility of the pilot. Now, on the part of the GCG, we are only monitoring. We cannot impose. Supposed to be, uh, perhaps the only matter that we could impose is to have transparency in the transaction, or for the benefits. What are the things? Procedure benefits to be uh, received from the bill help. Other than that, uh, I think we are, seems to be... What about Justice Kung, ano? If, if you fail the performance of their board, will that hamper their reappointment? Uh, actually, my, my point is, could the uh, GCG issue an order for uh, transparency. Mm -hmm. We could do what you have said, uh, Mr. Chairman, but the problem... I know it's not easy, Justice, diba? Kasi may criteria din yung performance. But kung klarong-klaro naman na ito ang iyong mandate ng agency mo, and then baliktad ang nangyayari, then anong klaseng performance uh, uh, yan, diba? We, 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 that, that, so so that, that's That's where I am split in my opinion. In one sense, I agree with the directors, bakit naman every year yung review, di ba? Na baka pwede naman every two years. But on the other sense, dun naman sa hindi naman nagde-deliver, parang sa politiko din, di ba? Three years is too short for a good mayor, di ba? But even one year naman is too long for a bad mayor. <laughs> so, the same thing, no? It's even two years is too short for a good... Uh, director, CEO, uh, chairperson, but uh, one year naman uh, is, ano, and of course, I, I sympathize with you na when is it the fault of the CEO and when is it the fault of the board? Because hindi naman tayo pwedeng mag-judge uh, by generalization, di ba, unless pabaya yung buong yung board. So maybe that's one thing that we really have to tackle together in the next few weeks, no? That's why we will comply to your suggestion that we will be, I will be sending a, somehow a license officer and perhaps one of your appointment to have a discussion and we will uh, try to, at the end, we will try to compromise what are the things we should uh, remedy the situation. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for the main presentation. Thank you. So, kung done yung presentation, let me thank the GCG and uh, wish you a good lunch and uh, all the best at work. Uh, welcome sa mga taga-SSS. Can we take a 10-minute break before we start? No? Uh, so, we can excuse the GCG. Okay. The GCG and we will suspend uh, the hearing for uh, 15 minutes.